Welcome back, everyone, to the Break the Game Weekly Alpha Edition number seven. I remain your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fear, whichever you prefer, and we are going to be moving on to the Losers Finals. That's about what it says at the bottom. Because it is the Losers Finals. We are going to see Santa Claus up against Itlander. I think. Let me know. Itlander, Itlander, Yeetlander. I don't know how it's pronounced. Please tell me. I'm assuming Eatlander. So we've seen a lot of Santa today. We may continue to see more of Santa. We may see Eatlander more. I don't know. That's why we play the tournament. If we knew, why would we bother? Okay, yeah, it's this is a kind of exciting. I am curious to see how Eatlander plays this. I can't remember if I've actually cast the lender. Like, I honestly am trying to think if I'm trying to wrap my brain. I, that, not familiar with that. No. I think. Wait, there is... Oh no, it didn't... Something didn't happen, did it? Nope. One lobby. Okay, let's go. Eatlander versus Santa Claus. Yes, Dominic Shadowfear. Let's go with that. Easier than doxing myself. So yeah, to refresh memory on the bracket, we have Santa Claus and Eatlander going for the losers' finals. Winner that fight Sparkling is a bit of a wild card to be honest. I'm not entirely sure where they're going to be coming in on this. And also, Eatlander beat Flicky, so Flicky got fourth place. Well, guess we'll find out. Good job, Flicky. That is exactly what the I seeding predicted you would do. Sparkling's a bit of a wild card, to be honest. I'm not entirely sure where <laughs> they're going to be coming really passive aggressive, this. but I'm sorry. It's like, it, it is what the seeding predicted. Oh, I think it's you were seeded fourth, you got fourth. You you confirmed the seeding was accurate. Actually, I'm not... Sparkling's a bit of a wild card, to be honest. I'm not entirely sure where they're going to be coming in on this. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the thing that happens sometimes. Oh, we'll find out. Getting fourth all the time. Actually, I'm not... Sparkling's a bit of a wild card, to be honest. I'm not entirely sure where they're going to be coming in on this. Hmm. Anyway. Well, I guess we'll find out. Actually, That's I'm fine. Not... Eventually... Sparkling's you know, a bit of a wild card, to be honest. I'm not entirely sure where they're going to be okay, coming okay. in on this. For now, though, we have Santa Claus and Eatlander fighting for not getting third place. Now we are going to see Santa Claus again on Fool's Bay in a best of one, trying their luck against Eatlander. Are we going to see that Bone Stalker strategy again? Legitimate question, because I don't know if Eatlander saw what happened. They would have been busy fighting Flicky at the time, so they wouldn't necessarily have actually spotted that whole thing. Which means Santa Claus might be able to pull it out once again and get some mileage out of it. It's best of one. They can do whatever they want. If it works, it works. Like, win's definitely a win when it comes to best of one. Hmm, speaking of. Alright. 
And yes, do stay hydrated. I have to stay hydrated because I'm using my voice a lot. And it is starting to get a bit tired. I can't go as high as normal. Or at least I couldn't. I don't know. Kind of rewarmed up during break just to make sure it was good. Anyway, we're back. Hitlander with Mala. Santa's Orzum. Okay, not going for this old Bone Stalker setup. They are not going for the worker push setup. Are they playing a macro game? No. No, 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 no. Santa Claus. Santa Claus, are you are you playing what What happened to Santa Claus? Oh wow, I guess it's the real mix up. It's the standard play mix up. Never see it coming. To be fair, Itlander didn't actually really play for fighting what Santa's generally doing. They went for the standard fast expand opener, fairly flexible thing. Okay, well, expansion, Legion Hall, no ether. Nothing out of the ordinary yet. The only, th I mean, keep an eye on the expansion. Santa's been known to cancel these in order to have more alloy for units. But I think this is normal. I think this is a normal game. Santa, all signs point to Santa trying to trick up Eatlander by playing the game like everybody else. They can do it. Santa is a strong player. Like, they, they have good fundamentals. They just like to go for weird creative strategies and just do weird things. To be fair, they're going for a second Legion Hall. That is unusual. Normally, you would go for Aether. Orism can get away with this. You do get enough alloy to build a bunch of Centauri, and Centauri are really strong on their own. Which means Santa is looking like they're going to be going for a pillar push. Eatlander has spotted that there's a Legion Hall front, but they already knew that. They have not spotted the Legion Hall in the back. They have no idea there's a Legion Hall there. They could maybe? Maybe? I mean, if they go on the side, uh, yeah, maybe. I don't know. Go on the side, come back here, they might spot it. If they think to look. Pro tip, by the way. Do try to get an idea of where all the different routes into your opponent's base are, because the front door usually gets blocked off, although in Fool's Bay not so much. But there's, there's a path that with the tower on it, typically, that path is effectively blocked off. Try to find other paths. Because, actually, Fool's Bay is really easy to get in your main, on the opponent's main base with, come to think of it. But yeah, keep, keep an eye out on the other paths, just to make sure that you're getting your scouting in there from time to time, especially in the first four minutes of the game, so you know what your opponent's up to. It's especially important against Aru, because they can do anything off of their God Heart upgrade. And in the case of Eatlander, it is not clear what they're going for. Oh, never mind, there's Bone Canopy. In case of Eatlander, it's Bone Canopy. A common choice, to be fair. Santa Claus does have seven, soon to be eight Zentari? No, just seven Zentari. Never mind, there's the eighth. Eight Zentari. They have almost enough pyre for the pillar push. Mast Hunters will be going to intercept. Eatlander knows if they let that pyre go to Santa Claus, it's a pillar push. Even if they don't let it go to Santa Claus, it's still a pillar push because it's just a matter of 30 seconds or so before it becomes a pillar push. And now Santa has enough for a pillar push. Eatlander. They have thrums coming in. Zentari will... like their The power of Zentari is going to be a little limited. They can't shoot up, so this is a... It's like, what, 15, 20 seconds left before the thrum come up? Pillar probably going to drop in the main base. Zentari on the way. Pillar drops right by the main god heart. Bunch of hunters just holding back. Accepting the loss of this... One Legion Hall. The Thrums coming in, though. They do not have to worry about Zentari. They can just go. Mass Hunters coming in with the Thrum support. Mass Hunters are taking a lot of hits, but the Zentari will not last. They cannot stop the Thrums. Won't be able to take out the Godheart in time either, which means Santa Claus... <laughs> they're forced to retreat here. I mean, they are taking a lot of Mass Hunters, but the Thrums simply are not letting the Zentari live. Now more and more Zentari going down. Thrums... Clearing out the numbers. There is nothing else here, is there? No, there is not. There is this. There is an. A, oh, there are Zephyrs that will be coming eventually, but not yet. 
And the symbiote's looking to distract from the god heart. And time has been bought! Defense is successful! Itlander maintains their god heart. They do not lose their tech advantage. And they have a bunch of thrums to work with. Which, to be fair, they have a bunch of Zephyrs to fight. Which, okay, well... They could still do some harassment if they wanted to. More importantly, they stopped the pillow push. Early Thrones did the trick. Of course, they did lose some supply in the process. They are going to be having to rebuild that. A little bit slowed down, but hey, Thrums coming in. They got the defense. They got the harassment going in. Defense from the Zephyrs is online, but the Thrums do not care. They're just there to distract. They're there to mess up Santa's timing, just to push them back even further. Again, Santa, they, they're kind of even. They did some damage, they took some damage, so the more Itlander can push back here, the more they're going to be putting Santa on the back foot. Of course, given the circumstances of what Itlander is building, they have Noza Calls. And Zephyrs, like, Mass Hunters don't do great against Zephyrs, they do okay. The Calls do better against Zephyrs, though on the flip side, Zephyrs do better against the Call. It's a, it's kind of a weird micro situation. Upgraded the call are gonna have a lot of work, room to maneuver. Well, a lot of room to just be useful. But we aren't seeing any of that. Midlander is focusing much more on getting their economy online or getting their economy upgraded. They're not as focused and getting thrums. They're not as focused on getting their mainline units. They're confident. It seems that Santa is not going to be going for another attack. Not going to be pressing. Well, the position is not only an advantage, per se. It's kind of, I mean, they did some damage. It's... Yeah, I guess... No, if Santa moves out, they're going to get hit hard by Thrums. What was the thing? But hey, Edelander getting more pyre to their name, keeping Santa from getting yet another pillar. Well, another pillar. Only had the one so far. Knows the calls. Oh, no, this is not the call at all. I misinterpreted this. This is mass, mass upgraded offering mass hunter. Yeah, this that's okay. So you have the red, you have the red veil. You have the second upgrade of offering available, which is also likely to lead to well, not unlikely to lead to dread sisters. It, it's Itlander is clearly playing a mass hunter oriented build. They don't really care about damage stuff. Again, the calls and zephyrs kind of balance, they counter each other. But Dread Sisters. Oh, we saw earlier Dread Sisters with the with Birthing Storm. Oh boy, that was terrifying for the Zephyrs. Not to mention Santa's out of main. Like they're wandering the map. There, there's no defense down here. There's a couple of Zephyrs, but pff, so what? Like seriously, the Thrums do not care. Of course, they also didn't actually go for any of the, the symbiote or the moats. But hey, they don't really care about the defenses. In the back line, there's nothing. And Yetlander's expanding behind this. As long as Yetlander doesn't lose their army, they can just keep Santa Claus occupied. Deal some damage, poke them down, keep them from building up too much. Then they're in a good spot. Drop the Reign of Blood as well. The timing is curious. I don't know if that was... Like, they're working with it. I'm not going to say it wasn't intentional. It was... Maybe not the optimal timing. That their units weren't all together. Now it's useful, though. Now Rain of Blood's once again going to be much more effective here. Or once again, it's going to be much more effective here. As Santa Claus... Now they're starting to take some damage. I mean, Rain of Blood and Offering is a potent mix. Rain of Blood heals you. Offering hurts you, but makes you more powerful. Rain of Blood heals you. Yeah, Offering Mass Hunters. Fully upgraded Offering Mass Hunters. Scary prospect to deal with. Now the thrums are slowly going down. This is still... Elander is looks to be kind of winning on this, but the pillar is down. The third is very vulnerable. There is... Yeah, there's no easy saving this. Thrums are all going to go down if they engage. Do not engage. You have half the army supply. You have half the army value. Upgraded mass hunters may be more powerful than their army value suggests. They're definitely punching above their weight. It's just... Numbers are not on your side right now, Edelander. 
They really aren't. And it looks like part of the problem was forgetting to build production structures. They, yeah, they fell behind on that. Getting some to call up. It's too little, too late. Honestly, cancel these. Cancel like it's okay. Can't cancel all of them. Can't cancel any of them. They're just dead. Oh, that's 750 alloy that could have gone to units. I mean, yeah, they needed the supply cap. They just also need the money. To be fair, Santa has not expanded yet. And Eatlander does have the calls up now. They're not upgraded, but they still exist. They're you know, going to hold the line a little bit. Damage is being dealt. The Zephyrs are not quite so free. What is Eatlander doing? Oh, I see. They're trying to go for a concave. It's... Oh, that was that was not worth it. That was so not worth it. And Eatlander, that's that. Santa Claus takes the game and moves on to the Grand Finals. Man, Eatlander had a really good shot at that, too. Like, the, honestly, if it weren't for the fact that they lost... Because like, when they had... Like, they defended quite well. And they started dealing some damage. But they didn't really go for moats. I think if they'd managed to hit some moats in the back, go for the harassment on the back, just really slow down Santa's economy so they couldn't build as quickly while making sure to build up themselves. Because they had the tech going. They had the Dread Sisters going. If the Dread Sisters had gotten online, the Zephyrs would not have had a chance. Like, this entire section with the pillar would have become all birthing storm food. But yeah, that's the thing. Thrum harassment is... It's a hard thing to pull off. I think if Eatlander... I'm, I'm excited to see as Eatlander practices... Like, if they get their thrum, the thrum multitasking a bit more, a bit more natural to them, that a situation like this will really work out in their favor. But yeah, that is that. So we are into the Grand Finals. Or very soon to be into the Grand Finals. With Santa Claus going up against Scruffy. And Scruffy is... Does get the win, I believe. Yes. Best of five. Scruffy has a win, one win advantage. And that is going to be that. So we are into the end of it. Last game of the... Or last set of the tournament. Not game. There are at least two games. But last set for sure. This has actually been a really fast tournament. Even with the potential of this set going on an hour, it's still been a pretty fast tournament. Very smoothly run. The players have been... The players have been here. They've been joining their games, doing the things. It's really what slows things down. And this week, everyone has been... Everyone has just been firing on all cylinders. Very well... Very well organized. Very well played. Like, all, all of you. All of you are doing a great job. Like, you... You have no idea how convenient it is when everyone is just in their game and playing their games and everyone signed up and here. Like, honestly, it's... It's really good to see everyone just... Yeah. Knows us up. Respects the TO. <laughs> it's... Where is Seamus, anyway? Well... Sure, they're in the background, just in case stuff is needed. Yeah, players are doing a great job here. So, we are going to start out with Scruffy's map choice. I expect Lost Province because that's the popular map. The options are that Fool's Bay, which we've already seen, and oh, right, first final is Fool's Bay. They're right. So we can just start. The Fool's Bay, and then, yeah. Lost Province, which we've seen, and Frontiers, which we have not seen this week, and probably won't, because no one really likes that. Like, Frontiers was the old map that was played, and then people don't play it anymore because it's kind of oh right God. need to find a better system for that it was played and it's now no it was the only map available I should say it was the only map available it's kind of small it doesn't really work that well it's it's a test map 
So we can expect to see Fool's Bay, we can expect to see Lost Province. And we can apparently expect Scruffy to go for a worker push? Against the person who practically invented them. Cool, let's see what they do. Let's see how they do with this. Doing it right, have the teapot up front just in case to check for the other teapot coming to the side. Though Santa... Wait. No. No, no, no. Santa Claus... Santa Claus isn't here. Shoot. No, this can't be right. Uh, oh, now they're... What? Did they not... Real, no, they must have really... They picked their immortal. What is going on? They have a 600 alloy in reserve. They're clearly playing the game. They just... What? You know what? Whatever. They're in. They're they're not saying, Oh no, I crashed. Oh no, there's an issue. We're going. And they're defending. Actually, they're doing a good job just building up their symbiote count. Mind you, Scruffy does have military units coming in the back, and Santa is just hoarding Alloy. Are they seriously? Are, oh, are they going to go for a counter? They can't go for a counter worker, but it's not going to work. That'd be silly. It'd be suicide. Okay, getting the production structures up. Santa Claus, are they. Okay, they want to get their economy going. Bastions are up. This is no longer free. Worker push time is over. But Mast Hunters are on the way. Santa Claus, for their part, has the two le or two Altars of the Worthy. They have the potential for 16 Bone Stalkers. They do have the money for it. Or they will by the time the Bone Stalkers come online. Maybe that was the plan. Maybe that really was just the play. It looked like they were not playing because they were just saving up the money they needed to get all 16 bone stalkers, or as much as they can, right off the top. And that's what they did. All right, I'm sorry to have doubted you, Santa. That was clearly intentional. Eight off the top, and another four will be coming in. The remainder will be streaming gradually into the fight. Are they here in time? Oh, oh, is that the plan? No, okay, so let's say, is that the plan to split? Have half them go into the opponent's base, have them defend. No, they're gonna all defend. Amazing. These mass hunters, they are, they are dead. Bone Star has got a speed upgrade in the last balance, ba last balance revision, and that is exactly what Santa Claus has taken advantage of. Like, mass hunters definitely have a lot more straightforward power as they get upgraded, but Early game, that's not a thing, and Bone Stalkers have a bit more speed. Like, early game, you do not have offering. That's not how the game works. Scruffy building up a few more Masked Hunters. They do not have an expansion yet. Neither does Santa. Scruffy... Oh, they have, what, six Masked Hunters? Six Masked Hunters. Eighth's on the way. Seventh is up. I mean, more are coming, but this this altar's not going to last. Mark Prey coming down as well, pushing them back, and the altar goes down. Santa Claus having to contend with <laughs> symbiotes actually doing a good job providing distractions. The more distractions they provide, the more the masked hunters can do their work. Bone Stalkers, of course, have to worry about that, but what? Frontliner symbiotes! Frontliner symbiotes providing a successful defense for Scruffy? Oh, that is close. Santa with the blood well means they are able to re regenerate. Though Scruffy, again, is their base. They have the units coming out right off, right there, right out of the nearby buildings. Again, the third, also the worthy, likely a fourth coming soon. This is clearly something Santa likes doing. They tried it. We I, we did see them try this against Scruffy last game, and they didn't quite manage to get the right timing, get it quite set up. It was a bit of an it was an odd positioning to begin with. This time, though, it's finding a lot more traction. Now Santa, are they? Ooh, they are pushing hard. Got like 20 Bone Stalkers on the field against Scruffy's six Masked Hunters. 
along with the blood will providing that extra healing. And again, more Masked Hunters coming in. It's just not enough. You can see that Sand is being super careful to avoid being close to the Bastion. All they need to do is take out... Really, all they need to do is take this out. If they take out the Grove Heart, the game ends. There's no backup God Heart anywhere. Nothing on the field. This is it. I mean, Santa doesn't want to throw this away if they can help it. They take out secondary targets, you know, just to make sure that their opponent's not building up behind this. They have their own expansion as well. Santa Claus definitely has secured their economy in the back lines. But again, this is a question of does Scruff... They don't have the resources to do it. They can't... They cannot, unless they canceled this... If they canceled the altar here, they would be able to make a backup God Heart. But no, their, their strategy is... They have the upgrade offering, they have Infuse, push everything they can to stop these Bone Stalkers from hitting the Acropolis, or from hitting the God Heart, Grove Heart, Town Hall structure. Nope, it's over. Santa Claus still pulls it out. Pull off that victory. Off of a Worker Rush? Worker Rush into, into this 20 Bone Stalkers. I, really, that opening was weird. I Like I said, I thought Santa had dis disconnected. I was wondering what was happening there, but apparently, no. That's just the strategy. That's, the build is, make your opponent think you disconnected. And then, hope, save up enough money to just power out two Altars of the Worthy and 16 Bone Stalkers. And that's it. Alright, what have we got? Fatal Arrows we've got. Alright, cool. That was weird. That was not Moth well, Province. Okay, well, that's gonna be... I'm just waiting on what the heck's going on. What the heck's going on? All right. Weird. Let's go properly this time. So, Santa did take the last game. It's 1-1. One, one. We have essentially a standard series at this point. Santa going for Zol. Scruffy, we don't know yet. I mean, we won't know until we get into the game. That happens sometimes. Alpha things. So, what are they up to now? Orzum for Scruffy. A little bit easier to defend that kind of shenanigans that Santa did with Orzum than with Mala. A little bit. Maybe. Early Legion Hall definitely shows understanding of what's going on. Although, to be fair, Scruffy did fall behind a bit due to the worker push. Right, that didn't help their economy one bit. That didn't help them advance. Santa going for the early expansion, so I guess they figure, well, I guess we just defend against whatever Scruffy does, because either they think Scruffy's going to go macro game, and it's fine, or they think Scruffy's going to go for trying to deal with the early attack, and Santa just out ecos them. And that's clearly what's going to happen here. Unless Scruffy gets a big push in. But no, Scruffy's deciding now. It's, they want for safety. They're not going to go for too hard of a push. And to be fair, this is something Scruffy's been kind of doing a bit. Like their early Legion Hall to get a few Zentari. And then... 
an expansion afterwards. Though this time, no early Zentari. Spending that money on Ether Extractor instead. So yeah, not too far off in terms of timings between the two players. Expansion a little bit slower for Scruffy, but not that much. Ah. <clears throat> ah! Man, I... Ooh, I'm fine. I'm fine. Voice is fine. So, Santa's not being cheeky this time. Not yet. They might be. We'll see. I don't know. But they're not right. I know. Scruffy, yeah. Early three or four Zentari. Likely to go for pirate hunting. And they want to get the early pyre just to have it. They occasionally will push for timing pillar push. We've seen that a few times. It's not like it's a bad idea to get pyre anyway. Especially for Orzen. Pillars matter a lot. Oh. What's going on here? Nothing. Bones Darker's posturing. Zentari posturing. Zentari kind of win the position game. But Scruffy knows they can't go over the pyre right now. Zentari are... Are they the focus? Looks like they're kind of the focus. Oh, whoa. Yes, yes they are. What? Scruffy going for three Legion Halls. No apparent tech. They do have Aether under construction, so tech is an option, but they have none currently under construction. Is this a 12 Zentari pillar push? Are we witnessing a 12 Zentari pillar push here? I'm thinking we might be. Santa Claus double checking for tower. Expansion, seeing what's been built up, seeing what they can take. Also checking to see if anything's going to spot them walking in, and it would have, but they were clever with the teapots. I gotta say, Santa, the way they play Zol is pretty much the way you're supposed to play Zol. Like, being sneaky like this, using information to your advantage more than anything else. Yeah, that is, that is how Zol is meant to be played. Santa's really getting in the headspace. It's, it's great to see. Is Santa just going to go for... I don't know, they're still... They're okay, they're going for Neuroside. They could... Okay, they can go for whatever they want. This is pretty much... This is not cheese into one thing. I kind of expect Red Veil. I kind of expect Stock Ambush Bone Stalkers. I mean, we'll see. They're dealing with 12 Zentari coming down at them. Not exactly the most... Or eventually 12. Not exactly the easiest thing to contend with. Again, Santa Claus with the sneaky Bone Stalker run buys. Nothing. Is something in the base to defend? There should be a Zentari. There's two Zentari coming back. They should be fine. They'll be able to take care of the Bone Stalkers before any more damage is dealt. Same time in the natural expansion for Santa Claus. Pillar is dropping. Mark Prey is dropping as well, and the Zentari are getting body blocked into it, so they will get the damage. They will take extra damage. But the Bone Stalkers are just going to die because Pillar gives everything in that, on the Karath side extra damage. Santa Claus has nothing. They have a bunch more bonus targets coming up. They have a couple resonants coming up as well. Are they going to come up in time? This is natural expansion. It looks dead. I mean, the bonus targets are going to try to defend. Santa Claus needs the resonance, and they are not going to get them. Scruffy very quickly taking game two, taking back their advantage. Now Santa Claus has to fight from a match point position for their opponent. So from here, we are looking at... What is Santa's map? Because this may be the last game of the tournament. See what happens. I have expected going to say Frontiers, to be honest, but... I don't know. Maybe.
Fool's Bay. Fool's Bay for what may be the last game of the tournament. As we get into it, Santa Claus does not have a lot of room to be cheesy. They might still go for it anyway. Scruffy, however, does. They want to try to out Santa Santa once again. The opportunity presents itself. Scruffy going for Mala. Santa. Not sure what they're going for yet. What is going to be happening here? Alright, well. Do one more giveaway raffle just in case people still want keys. Hey, it's Lord Stompy. Alright, we do have someone who wants keys. Awesome. That's not a waste. We are on Fool's Bay. Scruffy is Mala. Santa is Zul. Santa has been doing some shenanigans in Zul. Last time, actually, Santa won this. Worth noting. Santa won this because Scruffy went for a worker push. Scruffy's not going for a worker push this time. Santa might still be going for holding out, waiting for a thousand alloy or so. Yeah, it looks like they're doing the same thing. Doing a bit of worker pull just to force production of more workers, and then saving up money for a bunch of a couple of legion, a couple of altars of the worthy, and then sixteen bone stalkers. So it's five hundred of the altars of the worthy, and another eight hundred. No, eight hundred. Yeah, for the bone stalkers. So thirteen hundred alloy is what they need in total. And it's also a question of alloy gather rate, because they need that alloy, but they also. We'll be gathering again 300 a minute, give or take. Uh, so if they have about seven or 800, they should be able to start building. And just have it work. It takes a couple minutes for the, the altars to be built up. So they should get the money back in time by the time the altars are up. But yeah, they're there. Oh, waiting for a thousand. Okay, might be a little high. Oh, they were going for three? Oh, okay, that explains the weight. Okay, that's 750 on altars alone, and they won't be able to build enough. They won't be able to build all the bone stalkers at once. Because they'll need 1200 alloy to get all the bone stalkers. They're not going to get more than 700 by the time these are done. Same time, Scruffy knows what's up. They're going for the Altars of the Worthy. They also have their fast expansion, but this is one of the situations where... Okay, that makes more sense. Oh! Oh! Santa with the reverse expansion cancel! Oh, that is tricksy. Yeah, because like, uh, like before, a couple, two or three weeks ago, they would go for an expansion here, and then you'd scout it, and then they cancel it, and build more production structures, and then go have more production structures. Now they're just doing the opposite. Santa with the tricky plays. Double expanding too, in fact. The eight bone stalkers to make to sell the fact to sell the idea that they're going for bone stalkers. So the opponent probably realizes there's no way they have all 24 bone stalkers from the three altars right off the bat. So you have eight of them just to sell it, because that's a reasonable number from what you'd expect Santa to have for three altars. Although Scruffy might realize, hey, wait a sec, why three altars? You can't afford three. Two? Yeah, you can afford two, but you can't afford three. Not at once. Not at that timing. They might have clued in, but they might have also thought that maybe Santa was just pushing really hard to get a ton of bone stalkers real early. It wouldn't be all at once, but eventually, yeah. Like, to be fair, the cost of the the cost of these, if they weren't cancelled, would have gone into bone stalkers by now. So the question is now, does Scruffy still buy it? And the answer will soon be no. Scruffy's botting yeah, this was a trap. Or this is a trick, rather, not really a trap. But this is entirely a trick. That trick, however, prompted Scruffy to make twice the number of units that Santa did. Which means Santa's going to be on the hook for defending against it, and they... Well, quite frankly, do not have the tools. Like, if Scruffy goes for a solid hit right now, 
they could take out an expansion. And the expansions are... One of them's done, the second one's just about done. Canceling them is not an option. With eight Bone Stalkers. Okay, another seven on the way. Oh, this is all down to timing. Scruffy has the advantage of... Of timing. They can come in now. They can push. The Bone Stalkers aren't in yet. But the reinforcements are on the way. Mark Prey is dropped. Looks like most... Oh, no, they got they got hit by the damage boost. They got marked. Still, the offering is enough. More than enough, in fact. Bone Stalkers aren't able to hold this. And now, Master Hunters can just go do whatever they like. Take out the tower. Build their own. Why not? That's only an Erevor. Can't hit down yet. So now, Scruffy, they still have their expansion. They still have a solid economy. They have a solid army as well, and they are taking out everything that Santa Claus has built up as part of this ruse. So that is the one thing about this kind of ruse, is you get, if you get hit, you die. If your opponent spots it, you die. You kind of have to keep an eye out for, for teapots. And that's hard to do. I mean, the one thing I could maybe think of is if you had some of your Bone Stalkers back, so it's kind of selling the idea that there's reinforcements streaming in. Then you might be able to use them to pick off a couple teapots that are hanging out here trying to spot things. But they didn't. And Scrappy spotted it. And there are reinforcements on the way. There are Omnivores as well doing some damage. This is still a matter of attrition. Santa just doesn't have a strong economy anymore. They've lost one of their bases. Their second base is not allowed to mine. Bone Stalkers coming in at a solid angle. Cut it, crossing the T on Scruffy's force. Wiping out all the mass Hunters with very few losses to themselves. So Santa able to hold off the attack, but they lost a base. Scruffy expanding behind this, so Scruffy will have the stronger economy going forward. As well as, of course, the stronger army and... Or soon to be stronger army. Especially given the upgrades. Top of Resonance being built up behind this. Santa, for their part, has three altars and no upgrade structures. They are swimming in ether. Which, I just realized, as a phrase, is something that people could literally do right now, in real life. Probably a bad idea. It's probably a very, very bad idea. But you can swim in ether, I think. Well, it's a liquid at some pressure temperature configuration. You can swim in it, not sure how long you... <laughs> not sure for how long, but you can. Santa. A bit more pyre on there now. And they could definitely just drop Mark Prey as they need to. They've been going a lot for Blood Wells, and I could see them doing that, like, around here-ish. Setting up just for this harass that's being telegraphed by these Bone Stalkers. Or they're just gonna go, they're just gonna go straight in. No time to spend pyre. Scruffy not worried about that. The base is still pretty safe. The Bone Stalkers did their job, pulled back Scruffy's Mast Hunters, and now Santa Claus can just rest easy, knowing their Mast Hunters are the Mast Hunters are not going to be attacking them anytime soon. As the third base is being rebuilt, this is an important thing to guarantee. <laughs> this is it's crucial that Santa knows where their opponents are at. But the resonance are Oh, I don't have we seen the new resonance on stream? I think we've seen the new resonance on stream. I love the new resonance look. They're kind of cute, honestly. There's a little waddling out as they walk. I mean, they do have... It's four legs. Yeah, it's a really cool-looking walk. And that is... That is a threatening army coming down from Scruffy. Bone Stalker Harass... <laughs> <laughs> Symbiote's taking... Like, this is what I meant. This is what I said. Symbiote... Workers are remarkably strong in this game. I mean, not so much against Resonance. Resonance are just way too much going for them. But, yeah, against standard... Like, against small run buys? Yeah, workers can defend against that, which means Scruffy is totally fine. Santa's third is going down once again and cannot be cancelled. Their natural expansion is being protected by new Resonance that are on the way. Not sure if they have deploy up, because it's pretty clear that 
Scruffy does. Santa with a Mark Prey, though. And a body blocking some of the forces in. They will get the damage boost to work with uh, work for them against the Masked Hunters. But the Resonance is just too much of a threat in back lines, and Santa cannot take advantage of that damage bonus. Maybe one shot at this point. Maybe? No, not even that. It's over. Still, the Resonance are deployed on blood on brute ways. They are going to be able to at least get that damage, or they get that range bonus. And damage bonus on that resin. That's the power of Mark Prey. Getting that, getting hit for the damage. But despite the clever tactics from Santa Claus, Scruffy still has the extra base. They still have more units on the way. They still have, because they have a larger armor value, they actually have less supply used. Which is the curious thing. They're very army value efficient. A lot of resonance. That's the thing. Much more resonance than basic units. And shifting into trip. Oh my god. Triple? I I get the sentiment, Scruffy, but you do realize thrums are 75 ether each now, right? Like, triple bone canopy is all well and good, but you're not going to be able to build that many of anything right now. Especially not alongside Resonance. I see another Resonant coming up. But hey, their production is going to be solid for the next... Okay, quick into Deep Nest. Still Ether Hungry as a build. I respect it. It's Ether Hungry, but they do have nothing else they're spending Ether on right now. They're definitely just shifting hard into Behemoth. And they're saving up the Ether for it. Give them credit where it's due. This this clearly has been planned. This has been this has had some math done to it. Deep Ness is up. Behemoths are ready whenever Scruffy is. All Santa, for their part, going for Undesbind for the extra route way around the map, for the extra range, to deal with the ancient. Now getting attacked as Behemoths are being built up for Scruffy. They will be behind on Pyre. So Santa Claus. Able to take the Pyre. Does have... Okay, we should be seeing... Probably going to see Great Hunts pretty soon. I mean, Great Hunt, Infuse, and Mark Break could all happen at once. Which would be a challenge to deal with. I mean, that would be... That would be tough. Like, Scruffy can drop Rain of Blood, but wouldn't have much else. Given their army value and size, Reign of Blood actually... Oh, actually, Reign of Blood would be great. They're not relying heavily on offering Masked Hunters, but just for the sustain. Reign of Blood would do them a lot of good. Oh, that's a lot of offering Masked Hunters. Is there a Red Veil? Did I miss a Red Veil? Yes, I did. There is a Red Veil. There is, in fact, probably fully upgraded Masked Hunters. Santa Claus is... Not, I don't know if they're aware how behind they are at this point. Army value is actually fairly close, though. Like, Santa Claus, despite an earlier, more, like, more supply-focused army, they've really shifted to Resonant Underspine. Like, they're just going for Resonant Underspine pushes across the entire map, and Bloodwell, too. Just slow, Resonant slow push with presumably ambush stalkers. That is, with the damage and range bonus. Oh, I presume incorrectly. There's no Red Veil. Omnivore's in the main base, providing some assistance. There's the Reign of Blood! Santa, Santa Claus going for their own push. The defenses are still there, while Scruffy able to take out the natural expansion with little resistance as, well, the entire army's over up front! Santa Claus having to contend with Behemoths on top of all of the ground forces. Scruffy now is taking out the exp natural expansion. Santa Claus Trying to take out the third of the behemoths, providing some there some resistance, but underspines, underspines do shoot up. This combination pretty well thought out, to be honest. Like the underspines as an anti-air force to protect the protect the resonance, it's kind of cool. However, a ma as a matter of time, Scruffy is just pushing this hard. The Legion halls are, are altars of the worthy are going down as a last line of defense between Santa and losing their godheart, losing their base, losing all of their economy. 
And not to mention the natural expansion going down as well. This is it. Santa Claus is the great hunt. Trying their best to use that to win this base race. And they have set up a backup just in case the base race doesn't go their way. So Santa Claus has the advantage in this base race going to the main base. This is everything. If Santa Claus can push into the main base, take out the Grodhart, that is going to be it. The Behemoths are causing a lot of problems. The Kittle in particular are causing significant pathing problems for Santa Claus, giving Scruffy all the time in the world. They've taken out they've taken the natural. They've taken out the main. Santa Claus cannot rebuild at this point. They do have Thrums coming around the side just to try to help out. But at this point, all they can do is gather some information, maybe spot for the Resonance. The Behemoth's causing problems. Mark Prey to try to hold things some advantage for Santa Claus, but Scruffy, they have to take out two more, what, backup bases? Santa Claus has no production. Santa Claus has no tech. These behemoths, they are, they're holding the line. They save the day for Scruffy as Scruffy, 3-1, takes the tournament out of a tight base race that Santa Claus had basically set themselves up not to lose. Scruffy defended perfectly. So that is our tournament. <laughs> and what a tournament it was. Holy cow. All right, man. Making up for the Walter Moon tournament, not allowing tier one units. Santa Claus playing all tier one all day. And that was the, the Walter Moon tournament's their rule set, but there you go. Speaking of, we do have that tomorrow. So do tune in for that as well. As for today, that is the tournament. Thank you to all of the players who signed up for making the tournament what it is, because we need players for tournaments to happen. Sparkling's a bit of a wild but we also need TO. I'm entirely so sure to where Seamus they're for going handling to the organization honest. in the background. Actually, also double special thank you to the players as well for also That's handling the organization as it was. Again, all the players today were very smooth. Actually, like, Sparkling's a bit of a wild card. There were no conflicts. I'm entirely sure no, where they're going to be coming in. As far as I could tell, no slowdowns. Everything just. The players were. Oh, on top out. of keeping the tournament flowing smoothly. Like, Seamus didn't really need to step in. Actually, so thank you to all the players Spotlight again for a bit of a wild being, card, to be honest. I'm not entirely sure where they're going to be coming in on this. Now, that's the skill in itself, and it's very appreciated. Oh, we'll find out. Thank you, of course, to the... Actually, I'm not... Spockling's a bit of a wild watching. card, to be honest. Wait, no, I'm not entirely sure where so. they're going to be coming in Hang on, on this. Don't have a co-caster today. It's thrown off my script. Tomorrow, we out. have the Walter Mode Tournament. That is Santa's own tournament they like to host. Do join that, because Actually, it's a fun Spockland's tournament. A bit of a wild card, to be honest. I'm not entirely sure where they're going to be coming in on is this. is going to be... What is the rule set? Oh, yeah. Let's find out. No scouting. Which is funny, because in our discussion, in my discussion about the design of the game, Spockland's scouting a bit of a wild was card, something I I'm not entirely sure where being they're really, going to be coming in on this. Really, 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 really key thing about the way that Immortal makes the game oh, we'll accessible out. to everybody. Which makes me very I mean, intrigued. Spockland's Perhaps a bit of a wild go. card, to be honest. I'm not entirely sure where they're going to be coming in on this. As make, it makes me very intrigued oh, how this is we'll going to go out. if teapot scouting is not allowed. You can still get the flying teapots. Buying those is fine. But, but the I mean, free teapots is a bit of a wild moved. card, to be honest. Cannot I'm not entirely sure where they're going to be coming in on this. That is the rule set for this week. So absolutely check that out tomorrow. I am going to be casting it again here. It'll be tomorrow at, I believe, 11 Pacific. So about two hours ago a day from now. Like, tomorrow, but two hours ago is when it starts. There's an audio loop happening. I don't see it in my... You can't hear me. What? Hang on. I don't know what's going on. Oh, shoot. Nope, I don't know. Seems like it's fine. No, okay, something is up. Sorry about that. I don't know what's going on right now. I... What the hell? Sorry about that. I'm not sure what's... 
whatever. Okay, maybe that'll fix it. I don't see any reason to expect anything like that. Anyway, so thank you all for watching, and have a good night, everyone. Sorry about the audio issues at the very end. Not sure what happened there. But thanks for watching, and have a good night.